and everyone is very much excited. So Alesh, we said <laughs> that uh, uh, I already told the teams because we were losing you that actually we have one team pitching and one question. You will be catching up the questions in the uh, um, the chat in the chat. So let's start. And oh, Alesh, about how the voting uh, will be, will you explain oh. this afterwards or now? Because I have to say that that was the, the most uh, frequent question I was given, uh, given this two days, you know, what about the vote? What about yes. the vote? Uh, the vote will be uh, using the pool uh, inside the, the Zoom, uh, because last year we have a problem. Uh, we have the uh, voting through the Mentimeter and there were some uh, attempt for a fraud uh, to, 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 to get your friends to vote uh, for you, your team, uh, but they wasn't attending to the, this uh, presentation. So this year uh, you will get at the end, after all eight uh, presentations, uh, we will start the pool and, uh, in, uh, during, uh, and you will choose one team. It, it will just one uh, uh, selection of the, the, uh, the, the best team. So uh, I suggest you to, uh, during the presentations, you just choose which team uh, from each uh, challenge is uh, the best for you, that uh, you, you can then uh, at the end choose the, 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 the best teams. Otherwise, people could, uh, at least me, sometimes forget what, what, what was the best solutions and uh, it, it's better to written down uh, or on the paper, on the computer or uh, on the phone. So. Um, you will have a voting after the all eight presentations. This is an important message, not after each challenge, but after all presentations, all eight presentations. Okay, all clear? Yeah. Wave, people, wave. We said virtual clapping, virtual clapping before that. <laughs> okay, Otto, well, that goes as well. So without further ado, let's go and announce the first pitching. Who will be the one breaking the ice? Let's start with a special challenge. That was the B challenge. Why special? Because these two teams actually compete in two hackathons at the same time. Uh, one also the EU, the uh, DG Edu Hack that will tune in later on. So let's start with team one. B team one, yeah, I said team one, it's B1, that was B smart, Helena, Urska, and Franz. It is your time to break the ice and start. Take us away. Hi. Hi. Uh, let me just check, do you see the screen already? Okay. Hello from the team B smart. At first, let me ask you if you're aware that the average age of the beekeeper in Slovenia is 60 plus. And I question you further. As it, why is that? As it turns out, people are not interested in beekeeping because there's a lot of information to be consumed and the informations are not at hand as we younger population wanted. Beekeepers lose interest because of that and also because of the sicknesses that are killing their bee colonies. The whole approach to the beekeeping industry has to be renewed and modernized. We need young beekeepers who are eager to learn, but they want to learn quickly, not with some boring PDFs and documents. When we get to that point, we, the beekeepers together for the goal of greater self-sufficiency, which we try to promote also in other agricultural industries. That's why we packed all the knowledge about beekeeping into a simple app which wants the beekeeper to be smart. They have all the knowledge in their phone and, it, and it's accessible anywhere in the world. You just have to pull out your phone from your pocket. They also can take quizzes so that they can take their knowledge to a whole another level. If there is a sickness near them, they get notified and they can take precautions instantly. They can also track their monthly tests in the beehive. We thrive that our app will be the only thing a beekeeper needs in the process of learning. After we launch the app, we want to gather 1,000 out of 11,000 Slovenian beekeepers. With the help of the Beekeepers Association, we want to cover our 50% of the investment. 
when the platform has gained the initial thousand beekeepers, we do not stop there. We intend to upgrade the app with segments for other people. Our goal is that the whole community will have the ability to support local beekeepers and create a better environment for the bees, which our app will have integrated. Our goal is to get new keepers educated, consumers active, just with the help of Be Smart. Thank you. Yay! Bravo, 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 team! So, these and education, Alesh, questions. Did we get some questions? Did we get something to ask the team? Uh, uh, is there any question from the uh, public? Uh, you can uh, put the question uh, into the chat. Um, otherwise, it I... was a great job, guys. Definitely very yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And I love the bee. I told you already. Yeah. Okay. The question: uh -huh. uh, How to educate the majority of beekeepers? They are sixty plus. So they are. Uh, let's say, uh, as we know, usually the the education process starts when you are six, seven years old, and uh, I think there is a special uh, educating approach uh, uh, for the people who is 60 plus did you have in mind that yes uh, we, <laughs> we also had that in mind because the app is actually uh, has the ability that if you have uh, the ability for people that can see that that have eye problems it's it's it supports bigger funds automatically so if a beekeeper has the funds bigger uh, the app will be flexible to show him all the content and it's we want it to be easy to use so there's not a lot of clicks so he can, he can get all the knowledge as fast as possible and uh, maybe that, that's the, yeah. yep, yep. one question done good answer okay. <laughs> i know i know that's why everyone who has questions be fast because this is the first and the last question that will be asked to the teams be smart team awesome job let's continue let's go on and see team b2 behave telebaiski doman tilan and mateus what have you prepared for us today hello telebaiski sorry telebaiski for the uh, for the foreign people it's uh, teletubbies <laughs> ah, okay <laughs> uh, uh do you see my screen yes okay great um we are team telebaiski uh and do you see my camera also uh, yeah okay uh, we are team telebaiski and we are presenting to you our solution called behave well, we have all eaten honey in our lives, right? Uh, the problem is that only a few of us are actually aware of how hard is it to make honey. But this isn't the only problem that beekeepers face. Pollution, deforestation, urbanization, all this uh, possesses a great, a great threat to bee colonies around the world. And lack of customers doesn't help beekeepers either. Uh, that's why for uh, tackling this problem, we created our solution. It's the game. Uh, and the game focuses on children. Why children, you might ask yourselves? Well, the fact is that children are the fastest learners and the future actually depends on them. We all agree on that. Um, they like playing games and uh, when they play games and when they learn something new, they always share their knowledge with their parents. That makes us the perfect audience for this problem. Um, you can see our solution, uh, our game playing in the background. Uh, we have created a demo of it. Uh, and uh, it's a game which focuses on expanding children's knowledge about bees and the beekeeping culture. Uh, for some of the best players, we also created the leaderboard, which encourages even more users to play the game. But uh, it also provides us enough information to be able to give best users some gifts. These gifts uh, are a great way of starting, communica starting the communication between beekeepers and the users so they can get some new potential customers. Because playing our game is fun, uh, we believe that we will provoke some further interest in uh, beekeeping. And that's why we also show the list of closest uh, tourist beekeepers where they can get the authentic experience of beekeeping. That way we are connecting heritage with tourism. 
Now, each user can also search for the list of nearby uh, sellers of the authentic honey and get a jar for themselves. Our team consists of uh, engineering and the computer programming students, which ensures that we are actually able to create it. Uh, you have already seen a demo uh, of our application. The final version will uh, use uh, Java, uh, Oracle Cloud Services, and Oracle databases, which we will use to gather the information from the OPSI portal, which is used in uh, questions for our quiz and also for information about nearby beekeepers. For communication between uh, beekeepers and their potential customers, we will use InfoBeep services. At the end, we would like to encourage you to play games for a better future. Yay! Play games for better future. Nice. I see you've done a lot already, so we can already play a little bit, huh, Mateusz? Uh, yeah, there's a little demo you can you can try. <laughs> uh-huh. So where are the questions for this team? As Martin said, get questions in early and then your question is definitely asked. Alesh, do you have questions? Uh, did you maybe test it, this app uh, on some children around you? Near you? Uh, yeah, we just tested it on our uh, sisters and brothers. Um, and? But not much going out in these days because of COVID and everything. Yeah. And they like it? Uh, yeah, I mean, there aren't many questions yet, but what they saw, they liked it. Okay. So, Mateusz, you will be building it up according to your uh, sisters and brothers' feedbacks. Uh, yeah, and feedbacks of our children, of course, when we get mm -hmm. to them. And <laughs> Great. Okay, maybe oh, that's. I guess this is it, Alesha. Maybe just a question uh, which is the, the minimum uh, age of uh, children who can play mm -hmm. the game? Um, I think that probably when they start uh, reading and when they go to elementary school, uh, because there are a lot of pictures in our game, it will be actually, they will be capable of playing it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And with this, we concluded the first segment. It's the bee challenge. Moving on from bees to floods. So these are the teams that were working on solving the issue of floods in Ljubljana. Let's start with team F2, flood alert. Luca, Gregor, team, and Gaspar. Join us and show us what you did. Okay, you guys can probably see my screen, right? We do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Can I start? Go ahead. Thanks. Hi, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to present our solution. Uh, I want to start by asking you a question, and I would really like you to think about it, okay? Um, if there was a fire next to your house at night, how fast would you want to know about it? If the water levels in the hills around Ljubljana get dangerously high, would you want to know about it as it happens or at the evening news? I'm guessing you all want to know the information as fast as possible. And that is exactly what we will provide you. Flood Alert is a simple and straightforward solution for prompt and automatic alerting of the citizens about an emerging flood. Flood Alert tracks the water levels, sensors, monitors the weather forecast, and cross-references it with the water levels and weather during past floods. This way it can predict whether or not a new flood is actually in the making. If so, Flood alert will first alert the municipality and emergency response services of the current status and possible flood development. If the trend continues and safe water levels are exceeded, flood alert will automatically send a notification or an SMS to the residents living in the area of potential danger with clear safety instructions, which can also be narrated for people with disabilities. This way, the citizens can take their cars out of the garages and move their property to higher grounds in time. As floods are, in most cases, a relatively slow and step-by-step -step advancing natural disaster, a lot of the damages could be averted by timely and precise communication. Flood Alert changes the communication game completely from retroactive reporting to advanced warnings, enabling preventive measures. This way, it will enable citizens and businesses to prepare for a flood and protect their property, saving millions in damages and costs. 
Our app is a part of the public service, therefore our main customers are municipalities. Nevertheless, we also expect the support of insurance companies as a big part of the damages caused by the floods are actually covered by them. Subscription to such notifications will be rewarded with a discount at insurance companies. The platform uses ARSO data and maps, therefore it can be easily scaled across Slovenia and later to other countries where a water level monitoring infrastructure exists. Furthermore, timely com danger communication can also be leveraged to communicate other kinds of imminent danger, such as fire in a nearby building, gas leakages, or any other kind of dangers within impact, uh, with a wide impact area. We are a team of three, all with extensive in background in fire service and IT. Some of our systems are already in use with some of Slovenia's fire departments, providing us with an exceptional knowledge of the current alerting system. Despite many required integrations, we estimate that the first version of flood alert can be active by the end of this year, enabling the citizens of Ljubljana not to be hit by high waters, but rather to ride on them. Thank you for your attention and stay dry. Oh, Gregor team, awesome. By the end of this year, you said, huh? Yeah, we could do it with some support from the local municipality. Uh, I'm sure we can. Awesome. Alias, do we have questions? Uh, not in the chat. But, but you have... do one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, you tested uh, this app on uh, in Ljubljana case. Uh, do you have in plan maybe go beyond Slovenian border? Because uh, I know that flood is not the issue of Slovenia. Uh, but I think it's a global issue, and I think it's a more and more important issue. As we saw this, this year in uh, Germany, what happened, a lot of people died because, of, because they, was not, uh, they don't have uh, information about the incoming flood. So what is your uh, view in the future about that? You're muted. Gregor, Tim, you're muted. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so what we need is the infrastructure, the water level monitoring system. Uh, once we have that, we can link it up to our system uh, and then monitor the weather as well. So we know that, you know, if the water level is high, but the, the, the forecast is no rain, uh, we can predict that the, the, the water level is probably not going to rise. Um, but we monitor the, the forecast as well. And we will uh, cross-reference it with past water levels and weather at past floods, because we also have data on when those floods happened, and we can check how that data was on those dates. Uh, that way we can actually predict whether or not uh, the forecast today and the water levels today are enough to cause an actual uh, flood or not. Um, obviously, we can also uh, push notifications by hand, uh, so it doesn't have to be triggered by the, the system. Uh, if there is a person who is expert enough and uh, they say that there will still be a flood, they can also do it by hand to, to um, notify the people that are in that uh, flood region. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much. Uh, and team, since we have only one question per team and there are questions to your teams in the chat that are, remain unanswered, please do answer in the chat, okay? Gregor, team, you have one direct from Marco waiting for you now. Uh, so, Ushka, yeah? the, the same is also for the, the I think, for the B team, uh, the first one, because they have also a question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said all the teams, check the chat. There are questions for you that remain unanswered. So go yeah. and answer so, them in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, we can well, we do, we actually... No, 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 answer in the chat. Oh, we sorry, talk. sorry. We don't talk. Thanks. <laughs> You know the rules. We mute you. <laughs> we'll continue now with the flood team number three was called. It was flat call. Rika, Nela, and David. David, it's your turn. I, I will be presenting. Hello. Nela. Yeah. Just a moment. Okay, so hello. I'm Nela. I will present flood call, guidance through the flood. I did not succeed in putting my boots on. Suddenly, I was kneeling in the water when it hit from the sewer. This is uh, what happens to a citizen in Ljubljana in flood of 2010. And we don't want to have this never again, right? So, but unfortunately, Ljubljana is pretty likely 
likely uh, to have uh, flooding again. And just this September, over 2,700 calls for assistance were made with over 500 buildings and millions of euros in damage. It is estimated that over 20% of all the buildings are located in the flood risk areas. The question is, how can we help? And the answer is simple, by informing the right people at the right time with the right information. We offer spatially tailored flood assistance with location-based SMS and guidance for finding safe routes. Let's consider the case of Anna. She is living in a flood risk area and has access to flood call services. If the thresh threshold of measurement stations near her home get exceeded, she is notified by an SMS. The message tells her to be prepared and offers further assistance if she needs it. If the second threshold is crossed, she gets a reminder message. This time, Anna uses the link within the message, which directs her to the interactive flood assistant. The flood assistant provides individualized information about flood risk. Anna wants to know what is the fastest and safest route to the next assembly station. And then the assistant provides it to her and Anna can get to the assembly point safely. The tools that we used uh, were ESRI software and Infobit products, as well as other, uh, other software that uh, we use in front and backend communication and open data. What is our deal? We provide our services to governmental institutions by providing licenses per household. Uh, it is worth mentioning that not only Ljubljana is the only city in Europe with the risk of floods. It is estimated that one out of five cities with over 100,000 people is very vulnerable to floods. And a lot of more cities in Europe are in need of these services, providing the right information to the right people at the right time. The dream team that made this solution was David with the experience in machine learning, data science, geospatial technologies, Rika as a finance and business development expert, and me as an ecologist with over five year industry experience in earth observation. And we make a dream team with very diverse knowledge. Flood call. Let's make our cities safe together. Thank you. Thank you, Nela. Let's make our cities safe together. Alesh, questions mm -hmm. for the flood is number two. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> no questions yet. Maybe just wait a second or two because sometimes people then the procession yeah. need some time to 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 ask the question. But uh, tick tac tick tac tick tac. Maybe we question. ask the same one as Marco had yes. for this team yes. as well. Yeah, so uh, what is your uh, plan in the future if you go beyond Slovenia? You mentioned there is uh, more uh, cities, cities in uh, Europe uh, over 100,000 uh, population, but uh, probably not in the Europe. Uh, I think you should look uh, globally. Yeah, yeah. Well, first, uh, you know, you can scale to other uh, countries as well. In Europe, it's uh, we know there is a directive about uh, sharing the information. So the information about water measurements is more um, available, let's say. So because it's um, it, it is important to have the um, real time information uh, to um, have the tailored uh, SMS um, triggered messages. So uh, let's start Europe first, and then uh, we can we can expand. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe just a sub question. Uh, so you can connect your system to all uh, uh, data sources uh, which is available. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, we're done. I think. Done. Yay! Yay! You hoo! Our cities will be safe. I know the Jilko and the team are happy. Ljubljana safe and dry. <laughs> Let's go to the third challenge there was that was working the teams were working on waste management and let's see how successful they were how will we manage our waste let's start with team E1 the flow of waste Boško Ljubče Gorian uh, Gorian and Boyan Hi can you can everybody hear me Yeah we hear you and right. we see your slides all right, thank you very much. So we're team MPM team E1 and today we'll be solving the problem of flow of waste so uh, to accomplish this, there are two tasks and two actual goals to be, to be solved. The first uh, part is real-time tracking of waste transportation. This means we, anal we analyze our flow and uh, we need to analyze the flow to actually know what is going on in our system to be able to make these decisions, aka to control management. The second part of this is the detailed historical backtracking, which basically 
uh, allows us to look at what patterns have emerged in the past and what types of routes in the past have been, let's say, uh, blocking or being a bottleneck in our system and which parts are underutilized of our whole infrastructure. The goal of this, uh, these two tasks is to basically solve route optimization and route sharing in this case, nicknamed WTS. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So why? Uh, of course, this is to optimize some aspects of this whole system. Uh, first and foremost, we would like to, of course, reduce the polluting and greenhouse emissions uh, that are um, em uh, emitted by this whole pipeline. But as well, we have some actual direct benefit to the end user, which is cost saving and time saving. Next slide, please. So let's look at a real time open data flow. First, we collect historical waste data, which, is, uh, which has, contains information about routes, waste types, and quantities. This is all open source data, so this is publicly available to anyone, of course. The next step is to actually use state-of-the-art uh, data science methods to validate, aggregate, visualize, and analyze these routes, meaning that now we, we get a much more representative feel of what the data actually holds within it and actually how we can use it. So it's not a big chunk of data that can be parsed in any way. The next part is actually the, op the, the route optimization or route proposal in this case, which is again based on contemporary AI-driven methods to allow us to uh, op, um, allocate the optimal, uh, the optimal route for a given specific scenario. Uh, additionally, this would also be in a scale for nicely with uh, real-time uh, requests by users. Uh, and of course, the end user here can either be a natural person or a company. So this will also be a factor in this real-time um, component of our system. Next slide, please. So let's look at actually the, the live demo we have, we have created. So at the beginning, we see we have quite a lot of blue dots. Each dot is either a recipient or a producer of waste. And there are 27,000 points in Slovenia only. So looking at this, we can't really get any conclusion. We can't get really any information. This is what the open data holds. Hence why we have the, this data science aggregation um, task, basically, which we have implemented, which now gives us a much more comprehensible feel of what is going on. We can see that each of these are clustered into local groups which, in which we can see how much net import or net export each cluster has. Additionally, we need to analyze, of course, the history of this. So hence why we can filter by date. And finally, we need to know what type of actual waste is being transported. That means that we have uh, maybe something that's uh, toxic, maybe something that is very, very hard to transport. For example, imagine we have two uh, entities that want to transport a specific type of waste. They can do this by by pinging or actually making uh, uh, an agreement with a specific company and then have this whole logistic process dealt within the system. Instead, they can actually open a form which should be uh, accessible to anyone who wants to get rid of some specific waste. And the idea here is that the system automatically allocates the optimal route and op optimal infrastructure route planning that should correspond to this type of waste. And of course, the end user, be it company or be it physical person, gets the final notification as to when. This, of course, can scale to any country that has this open data available. So next slide, please. So feel free, of course, we're using open data. That means that we have also the source code available on GitHub. And finally, a very short word about our team. It consists of me, Boško, uh, Migorian, uh, Boško, Ljubče, and Bojan, all ranging from uh, different uh, backgrounds and expertise, uh, from big companies to small companies, to academia, to industry, all in the background of data science. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Gorian. Great presentation, efficient. <laughs> and Alesha, I think, I believe we have a question from the audience, don't we? Yeah, uh, from my dear colleague, Jamie Lee from uh, United States. Uh, we attended on the data stewardship course. Uh, so a uh, question for you is, do you know how much of each type of waste needs to pick up when uh, you are proposing a route? Yes, that's the main goal, actually. That means that we, for example, have a truck that transports some type of, uh, of waste. We know how much space there is, and we know what the users, what they have requested to be transported. That means in real time, we get optimal route as to minimize, for example, distance driven and to minimize where the company and the infrastructure in, and the logistics as well should spend time in allocating these resources. OK, thank you. So I hope, you, uh, Jamie, they answered your question. Thank you. OK, so uh, the question is uh, uh, done and uh, so on. So next, please. Want to go on? Yes. Want to go on? Gorian, thank you. Let's see what your competitors did. 
And this would be team E2, Felix, Marco, Stefan, Gojko, and Ivan. Join us, please. Can you see me? We see you, hear you, okay. and see your presentation. All right. Okay, so uh, hello, uh, we are a group Felix and we took another perspective on how to tackle the waste management platform, uh, uh, challenge. So let me start by uh, asking you a very simple question. What do you think that happens when once you have sorted your waste and you have uh, dumped it into the local bin? You would um, you would think that it uh, goes to the recycle uh, to the re recycling factory, but we recently found out that some of that waste actually goes to the forests and is being dumped. So that raised a, a really big question with us. So um, we tried to uh, tackle this problem, and we also found out that there is some data on how the uh, waste is actually flowing through uh, through this country. Uh, and we found out that uh, uh, there are some uh, records that tell us uh, which of the waste collectors are uh, transferring data to which of the waste uh, processors. But unfortunately, nobody is actually looking at uh, the data. So we propose a system which is going to be uh, an oracle watching over the data that uh, the, the system that is under, undergoing with, uh, the waste, uh, with the actual waste management. And for that purpose, we have built a, a dashboard, which is actually allowing us to uh, explore different waste, man uh, uh, waste collectors data and how they, they are connected with, uh, among, among each other. Okay, so um, we started off with this hackathon and with this dashboard, we uh, intend on integrating with uh, uh, the existing waste management uh, platform and in a year, we think that we will uh, have a, a platform to fully manage waste transparently. And all of that we can make this, uh, make happen for at a fraction of a cost of cleaning up a natural disasters like the forest dumps that we already uh, found out that are uh, happening. And we are already working on our branding and meet uh, wasty for transparent waste. And the team behind it is actually uh, uh, consisted of me, Marco, Goiko, Stefan, and Ivan. And uh, we invite you to join us and let's save our habitat one dumpster at a time. Thank you for your attention. Let's say one habitat, one dumpster at the time. Bravo, Marco. Bravo, bravo, team. Questions? Don't be shy. Aha, uh -huh, see, awesome team. <laughs> Is your support group, I'd say? <laughs> Alias, do we have any questions? Just or we'll second. just save dumpsters and that's it. Let's do it. Just a second, Dushka, I have the issue with the next event. Uh, just a second, please. Can you just continue, uh -huh. please? Yeah, of course. I know that someone has a question. Martin, you have it. You see, because I know that there, there's some, something in between that will be going on and uh, uh, Alesh will announce it uh, after we finish because we are going to tune in somehow. That's, that's why the issue is somehow we're tuning from this event to another virtual event uh, with the beekeepers and then we'll come back. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, the situation is there that I, I need to go with computer there. They will connect me to the, the system. They won't <laughs> give us a live yet, but uh, I need to be there with the computer. So maybe it's a little frantic, but uh, Ushka, I hope you will help me to, 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 to finalize this. I, I will now just moving to the next location. No worries. Just don't forget to come back because you're in charge for the voting. <laughs> I have a question for Marco. Good. Uh, you said when we yes. put uh, trash in recycling bins, it can often uh, lead to being left in the forest. Well, where did you get this information? Is this really true? Because if it is, yeah. I am very, very sad about it. Yes, uh, we were actually very horrified by uh, finding out. But uh, there was a major uh, news um, uh, news report about it. It happened a couple of uh, months ago in Slovenia, and it was 
uh, done here in uh, in a local city. I am not really sure uh, about the details, but uh, I am happy to uh, provide you with the link to to the uh, article. Thank you so much, Marco. And yes, that actually all this uh, uh, illegal dumping is a huge issue here. So uh, if you solve it, awesome for all of us. So. Uh, let's continue without a lash with the firm forward uh, uh, challenges. So with this, we completed the, the, the waste management teams and we're moving to the fourth final uh, challenge, which is mobility. So is there another approach that we can take from going point A to point B? Team four, Paula and Otto will explain us what, what it is. Uh, Otto, you see, I already said Paula and Otto. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, give me a second. <laughs> so Paula is actually not your teammate. Huh? Uh, <laughs> you could you could think of it as a teammate as you, you like. <laughs> so you should see my screen. So you guys yeah. ready? Yeah. I have just... this clock with me this time, so I won't be too long. So yeah. Uh, Oh shit, I need to start at the beginning. Um, okay, so once upon a time, like long, long, long time ago, we used to travel through our city swiftly, quickly, cheaply, and getting from point A to point B was really not that hard and that challenging for us. You know, but in long, long time ago, we used to also travel around our cities in horses, with carriages, etc. So all this stuff, you know, it's long past gone. And at that point, we didn't really care about sustainable travel. We didn't care about the environment, nor we care about the sustainability. It just worked and it worked fine, right? But, you know, times have changed. We cannot do that anymore. Our cities are now growing. Our population is on the rise and we're faced with the biggest climate crisis out there. So getting from point A to point B is not really that feasible anymore, especially if you want to travel sustainably and with low impact on your environment. So with that said, uh, today I'll talk about the product that I'm building. It's called Paula. Um, you pointed that out quite correctly. And the problem that uh, Paula should address is how can we get more people and more businesses from point A to point B in the most environmentally sustainable, sustainable way, with low carbon footprint, with low emissions, and with uh, you know, making sure that people are happy while traveling there as well. And the idea of how to address this problem is, goes like this. Let's op use open and private historical real-time data to give people better routing options, give people a simple and very intuitive uh, tool uh, that they can use um, on a daily basis to get from A to B, and the system will just magically handle everything else for them. So th the solution is, in effect, a platform and a product built on top of it that will help people and businesses plan their routes way better and way more efficient. Mm -hmm. This means not just faster and cheaper, but also means with a low impact on the environment, the idea is to make this, this solution very simple and very intuitive, and it should complement the way how you travel around the cities. So Paula has many faces, which is an interesting fact. So this is one of the faces that Paula has. It's a, a messaging interface. So you can message Paula by saying where you are and where you want to go. And Paula will tell you what's the best eco-friendly, uh, environmental, eventually acceptable route. It will also compare um, the route that it will recommend to you with traditional means of traveling, such as car, for example. It will also give you a um, route that is still fast, but definitely eco-friendly route. The solution will also give you a link. And if you click on this link, Google Maps will open and you will have a good routing available through Google Maps. Why is that? Uh, the solution uh, is to use Google Maps because 70% of navigation today is done through Google Maps and uh, Google Maps is used with around 155 million monthly users. So this solution complements that it does not replace it. Um, obviously, this is not possible without go good mix and fusion of technology and data. And there is enough data. I definitely checked that. And data is fresh, it is deep. And uh, it's fusion of this data makes decisions like this possible. Now, at this point, I could talk about clouds, algorithms, optimization problems, etc. I could also mention that I explore Oracle AI and IoT platforms that Oracle uses, and also explore a lot of advanced analytics that these tools today often. So these, these challenges are 
there and it's possible to solve them in efficient and, and quick, quick way. Um, I also need to talk about this picture. So uh, Paula is built into layers. The bottom layer is data integration and exchange layer where we tap into the open open data APIs such as Bitsql, LPP, et cetera, government data such as Spain so that we can route based on what's the situation on the ground, plus private APIs, for example, uh, Prevozi, Amazon, et cetera, uh, if you want to extend this model to, to, to out of the city as well. On top of it, we obviously need to have gear services to compute distance matrices, gear, reverse geocoding, et cetera. And on top of this stuff, you also have then what's called um, kind of like product layer where you have things like all about which I demonstrated earlier or mobile apps or whatever data exchanges that you have and this product as you can see caters the needs of modern citizens it caters the need of government as it's given them points to navigate to help people navigate better and it's definitely an interesting opportunity for partners that want to optimize the routes better and more efficient and now at this point I usually run out of time so my name is uh, Otto Burgles I'm software architect um, what I saw in this demo is what I do on a daily basis with me and my team. And uh, earlier on this uh, presentation or, or, or event was said that you should do these things in teams. I definitely agree with that. This is something that uh, would take a lot of collaboration. And I propose open source model to build this thing, uh, which means that everybody is involved to contribute. We saw a lot of ex examples for these models for development. of Cassian, a piece of the... And that's... And that's that's it for me. Thank you very much for listening. Bravo, Otto, and and uh, envir environmentally cautious uh, and aware. Of Paula with <laughs> many faces. I love that the Paula has many faces. Great, uh, great. Thank you. Uh, there's there is a, there is a reason for that. So I don't want to build another app that people will need to download. I want to be there where, where people are. I want to use the, the existing messengers, WhatsApp, so and the SMSs that people are already using. So it's again, it's about complementing and making. Things things easier for people so that's why uh, that wow. interface and that's why many faces <laughs> great love that <laughs> and i see that martin you prepared a question for Otto. martin go, go ahead thank you martin please okay i need to uh, read it as well, as well. Uh, <laughs> yes. Paula, i lost you... a lash so you're my support team yeah. <laughs> first time here uh, it's a little bit a frantic situation but still uh, i can hear you now I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm speaking to the mask. Yeah, yeah. So. You just sort your thing. We'll go through it, and then you, you, uh, uh, you're back with us. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, Otto, uh, I like your solution a lot. I like it. Doesn't okay. replace uh, Google Maps, but uh, works with it. Uh, but my question is: Will Paula reward you in case you use the greener alternative? Uh, and can yeah. I see what my friends use as well? Can I like compete with them? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Mm -hmm. So how this thing is structured is that first it gives us ability or a platform where we can build amazing things on top of it because it unites all these data points and it, it has a really good engine that you can use to navigate. That's the first and very fundamental brick of this system. So yeah, you can build interesting things of it. So for example, if you use more sustainable routes, we can also, you know, compute some credit score or, or some points that can be used to get, you know, um, Bitsikile credit or, or, or LPP um, credit so that you continue using public services. So there are ways how you can further incentivize users of this thing through that. But from perspective of, of governments and, and municipalities, it also gives them a chance that they have a way of routing more people around the city. So that's also a very important pillar that's currently possible. Currently, for example, the uh, city of Ljubljana does not have an, a way of impacting how people navigate through the city uh, because Google just works essentially in one way. But so that's that's one really big benefit, not just for citizens using this app, but also for, for cities that would uh, extremely benefit from this as well. Bravo, Otto. Great job. Okay. Team with Thank Paula. <laughs> and we'll okay. conclude with the last mobility team. So please, team five, weightless, Jan, Dragan, and Jan. You're the ones concluding the, <laughs> the entire finals. Great. Great, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, hello, everyone. My name is Dragan. And uh, together with my friends, Jan and Jan, we created a prototype of an idea we had and uh, still have pretty much every day. 
Um, so let's set the scene. You just finished physical exercise. It's six o'clock on a Wednesday. You're tired and you just want to get home. However, you do not have a car. So you go to the nearest bus station and you look at the teleprompter te telling the arrival times of incoming buses. It says four minutes until arrival. So you wait and then you wait and you wait five minutes. And after five minutes of waiting, it says three more minutes and so on. And you're like, so where is this bus? Do I wait? Do I go by foot or take bicycle? Are there enough bikes? We've all been there. Many thoughts go through our head and a lot of them are actually bad, but some of them are not. This one was actually quite useful. That's the pro one of the problems we tried to solve with our project. The solution we came up with gives the user a choice to choose one or multiple routes, routes for LPP buses, including particular stations, so they can carefully plan on the spot or even before they leave. Every station also includes all the needed data, such as bike availability and expected bus arrival to make the planning easier. They can also look up nearby stations and all the bus routes that go through them and decide which routes or buses fits their needs the most. Our, our plans for the future are to create an interface that is even more interactive and user-friendly. We want to make the website or app available anywhere for everyone to use it so you can truly have an impact on our society. We're also planning on showing real-time bus data so you can know exactly where the bus is and decide if you want to go a different route. The final goal is to make traveling by public transport faster, easier, and better managed, which will have a positive impact on us and the environment by eliminating unnecessary car rides. Business plan. From a business perspective, assuming there are only 10,000 monthly Urbana users, and at the moment, if everyone is using Urbana, is ready to pay at least 0.5 euros or at, or at most 1 euro extra per month, and we get funded to further develop our project, at worst, we still expect a return on investment in less than a year after release. Now that everything they need is simply displayed on a single website or app, which everyone would have access to, our solution will make people choose LPP over driving by car or walking home. The main problem with public transport and why people don't use it is inconvenience. Today, everyone was waiting on a bus that arrived 12, 20 minutes late. Our solution will solve this exact problem and give you a chance to make a new plan on the spot making it more convenient for you. As a result, you will waste less time. Everyone that currently uses public transport, including me, <laughs> will be very happy to see a new solution that makes their lives easier. Even more people will start using LPP and particular AS services in their daily lives, which means bus routes will have to be optimized. There will be more buses and a lot less cars on the road, which will have an extremely good impact on the environment and furthermore, lower our global CO2 emissions. And so with that, what are we waiting for? Let's all get on board and wait less because waiting sucks. Thank you. Yay, bravo team. Because waiting really sucks, I have to say. So, <laughs> I think we all agree here. Yeah. So do we have a question for final team? Someone courageously unmute and ask. Hi, I have a question. Awesome. Go, Jure. <laughs> so um, do you also plan to incorporate like um, this um, car sharing services? So for instance, in Ljubljana, when you're waiting on a bus, there's also not, not just an option to go with Bicicle, yeah? you can also go with Avant to go um, and perhaps some other service in the future. So this is something that, that I would be very happy to have. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But uh, at the start, we kind of focused more on um, Bicicle and LPP. Um, sure, Avant to go is an option we can add later. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be a big problem for, for incorporation, but we kind of thought of this problem at the start. Uh, yeah, we have the data for Avant as well, so we could actually do the integration, uh, but with the limited time so far, we only integrated uh, Bicicle Leo, but it's totally possible to add Avant and um, the uh, parking slots as well, I think. Great, thank you. Well done, team. Congrats to you, congrats to everyone. Wave virtual. And uh, hello to your finalists, organizers, partners, and all visitors. Unfortunately, the music is over. So we have to continue with the formal part of today's event. Uh, we are together again, and this time I have the pleasant task of announcing this year's winners. Uh, Slovenia is the original land of the Carniolan bee, which is characterized by calmness, diligence, and 
excellent orientation. So in the spirit of these characteristics, I will present the winning team and the solution they have come up with. And the first winner is Be Smart. Congratulations. Uh, the Be Smart mobile app represents a loyal friend to the beekeeper. It offers him all the necessary information, knowledge that the beekeepers needs in his activities in, the, in an interactive way. The app can help him with the necessary education, reminds him of his monthly activities and other things. It also offers push notifications for beekeepers about dangerous diseases, for example, severe bee brood rot, as other beekeepers within a 10 kilometer radius are alerted to this serious disease. The app also has a block for beekeepers, which is a quick way to communicate, search, and share information. So congratulations to team Be Smart. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Kuritnik. Kur Kur uh, I would ask the team, uh, can the team can share their uh, feelings uh, with us, please. Uh, yeah, from the Be Smart team, uh, I would like to say that we are all very thankful for all your support. Uh, this wouldn't be such a great experience without the great organizing team of Transformation Lighthouse and Technological Park Ljubljana and others. Uh, on, the, on the other side, we had great mentors and also great, greatly prepared open data from OPSI. Uh, it is really unbelievable, unbelievable what can be approached with all the data we have. Uh, and thank you everyone for the votes. Uh, we appreciate that you have recognized the importance of gaining new beekeepers and speaking out to the people about the importance of the bees. Thank you. Thank you again. So dear minister, uh, can we now proceed to the award ceremony for the environmental challenge? By all means, I just had to unmute myself. So thank you. Uh, and the winning team for environmental challenge is the flow of waste. Waste collection companies each hire their own carriers. Thus many transport cause traffic jams, higher CO2 production, and of course, higher transport costs for each company. And this solution offers companies a reduction in their transportation costs and also has an ecological note, namely, Depending on the type of garbage, the company sends a query, the system checks whether other companies want to share transport, and the system assigns a new path to the requesting company. So congratulations to the team, the flow of waste. Thank you. Congratulations again. This winning team uh, to share their feelings. Hi, uh, team Flow is here. Thank you very much. We are very much delighted to, 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 uh, with the results. Thank you very much to everybody that organized to all the competition, and especially thanks to the amazing team I worked with. So that's Boško, Yupce, and Boyan. And we're looking forward to seeing this through and seeing what uh, potential this whole project can finally achieve. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, um... Dear Minister, uh, can we now proceed to the award ceremony for the flood challenge? Sorry, to the mobility challenge. Sorry, sorry again. Um, no problem. My list is okay, so you can make mistakes. I won't. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the winning team for mobility challenge is Weightless. It is a simple user friendly visualization with the help of leaflets and API dot on time data, which will increase the use of public transport, reduce the carbon footprint add bike paths and make traveling around Ljubljana much easier. No more wasting time browsing Google Maps for bus and bike lines. So congratulations to team Weightless. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, so also uh, for the winning team, uh, please share your feelings with us. Um, I would like to uh, thank everyone. Um, we were uh, extremely happy to join. It was a great experience, and um, hope we uh, hope we can continue to develop our app and uh, make something useful. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, the minister, uh, now to the last one, uh, uh, to the flood challenge. Of course, I just had to wait for the noise of the crowd. We are a little bit more silent. Uh, yes, indeed, Mexican waves and all. Um, thank you. And the winning team for the flood challenge is flood alert. Uh, as the rep representatives of Ljubljana municipality stated, Ljubljana has a problem with floods. In the last decade, Ljubljana has been struck, struck by floods several times, causing huge damages and costs to the municipality, its residents, and of course, the insurance, insurance companies. Uh, flood alert solution will change the communications game completely from retroactive reporting to advanced warning, enabling preventive measures. Flood alert, uh, flood alert will enable citizens and businesses to prepare for a flood and protect the property, saving millions in damages and costs. Furthermore, timely danger communication can also be leveraged to communicate other kinds of imminent dangers, such as fire in a nearby building, gas leakage, or any other dangers with a wide impact area. So congratulations to the team Flood Alert. Thank you, Minister. And also, uh, I'd like to ask the winning team to share their feelings with us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for this announcement. We're really, really happy that we won. Uh, especially, we're really happy that we get to make a solution for, for Ljubljana citizens and that we can leverage it for other dangers and, and you know, scale it across Slovenia, uh, possibly the globe. Uh, whenever we can help someone that really makes a difference and, and we're really, really happy that we can do it. Uh, thank you to the organizers. Thank you to the minister, Mr. Bustian Koritnik. Um, and we're really happy that we attended. It's our first hackathon uh, and definitely not the last. Thanks again. Thank you guys. Uh, so dear minister, I would like you to, if you conclude this event, this uh, fabulous event, which, uh, was uh, last weekend uh, and during this uh, day quite in hectic way so please thank you as i already emphasized uh, the importance of cooperation of citizens the state municipalities companies and our organizations today's event showed us that we can do it just look at what our hackers can do in a short time in 36 hours they produced excellent digital solutions all with the purpose for a better life of the individual, the economy, the society. And this year's hackathon was very successful. We had a lot of fun, got to know each other, competed, competed and announced the winners today. Uh, I wish all the competitors of this year's hackathon many more hacker challenges and successes. And thank you all very much for your cooperation. And you're of course invited to be in our company again next year. And at the end, uh, great thanks to uh, my team at the ministry, and of course, all the uh, partners and their workers. Thank you very much.